for no reason. You're so hairy. Gonna have to vacuum after this. <laughs> Good boy. Okay guys, guess what day it is today? It is chicken moving day. Finally, the polar vortex is over. It is only uh, minus 13, which is, go back one more time, which is 8.6 Fahrenheit. Uh, let's see if we can confirm that here. Minus 13. Yesterday, very important, it was only minus 4.9. We want the temperature at night to not go down too freezing cold because of course they've been temporarily cooped up, cooped up, in the uh, heated shop. Uh, it's a lot cooler in here because the heat doesn't blow directly in here and we put this plastic up here, but it is a lot warmer in here than it is outside. And uh, being so, we didn't want it to be a shock moving them outside while it was cold, so we waited until now, where it's only minus 13 right now, going to be only minus three, two, minus two tonight. Well, yesterday it was also quite warm. It got, what was it, minus, yesterday was minus five, yeah. But it got down to minus 18. From today on, it should be quite warm during the night. Uh, the chickens can handle that. They're quite hardy, at least all the breeds that we have. But if we can make it the most comfortable possible, that's what we'll do because it's not a big deal that they're in here. It's just a little uh, inconvenient, although I don't need to use this space every day. I think more so they're feeling a little cooped up. Yeah, <laughs> they are feeling cooped up. Uh, here's something that's kind of funny. Right here, <laughs> one of the birds managed to get up here because over the last, what, five or so days, mm -hmm. they decided some of the birds decided to roost up here like two days ago. So we're gonna be moving the chickens back out to the coop here in a couple days. But this is what's been happening at night. We got Phoebe, Plum, Blue, and Henrietta roosting up here for night. Minnie was up here too, but I already put her down. Okay. <laughs> and the, yeah, I got a couple girls over there. And Ashley found an egg up here. That's, whose egg? Minnie. Minnie's egg. We haven't been getting eggs lately, so maybe they've been sneaking up here to lay. So we're just gonna have a quick little look up here. Let's see here. Yeah, see, so this is what we didn't want to happen, but oh well, it is what it is. Easy to clean up. Watch out there, Plum. Oh, I'm gonna put you down, how about that? There we go. There you go. And how about you, Phoebes? And. Oh. Just try to do to me what you did to you when we first brought them in here. Okay. So I'm not seeing any. Any eggs. It is possible that there's some in here that we just can't see. I don't want them to roll off and just break. It's funny that over time, more and more birds have decided that this <laughs> was the place to, uh, to roost. Yeah, I'm not seeing any eggs. Okay, maybe that was the only one. So maybe they just stopped laying. All right. But here, the very next day, the day before we're gonna bring them outside, they do lay an egg up here. So I couldn't find any last night, but uh, they laid up here this time, which is weird, because they don't usually come up here in the daytime. No need to rectify the situation, because they're going back in the coop tomorrow. That means she jumped up there to lay an egg and then went back into the... <laughs> yeah, what the heck? This is not even in a box. Because there, there is an egg in the, in the box, in the green box down there. So someone else was like, well, this is where we lay eggs. So let's lay <laughs> eggs there. And then whose egg is that? Minnie. And then Minnie was like, you know what? Minnie is right 
Why would you do that? <laughs> this is Peep. Minnie is her sister. That one right there. Watch her fingers. Uh, is she gonna do it too? Why? What did I ever do to you? <laughs> anyway, she decided that this was the place to lay. By the way, that doesn't hurt that, that much. It is annoying, but it's not that painful. And today, there are no eggs up here, but it's probably because none of them have laid just yet. Uh, and they actually had been doing that for about four days already, just kind of jumping up there and roosting at night, which I think is hilarious because they would go right back in afterwards in the morning, probably because their food and water uh, were in here, but I can't be certain. All right, shall we move them? Let's move them. Okay, there we go. The two bossiest birds in last. And the reason that we do that is just so that they can't immediately claim the area and then start pecking everyone else. That is a natural occurrence, but it's kind of uh, can be uh, harmful to the rest of the birds if, if it goes on for an extended period of time. And it looks like they all just went outside except for Nugget and Peep. They, they probably enjoy having all this space again, yeah, and they immediately are dust bathing. Awesome! I think they're a lot happier in here than they were in there. So much more space, plus they got that pile of fresh, fresh shavings. If you remember last vlog, we swept the old ones out and replaced what they had in there with some hemp. But they're using it as a dust bath, which is, which is pretty awesome. Ashley's just taking some pictures for her Instagram. Make sure you go follow her. I'll have her info in the uh, in the description there. <laughs> it's so awesome to just see them all just like <laughs> dust bathing is like a like a communal activity. I mean, they do it for uh, uh, pest control and stuff. It gets a lot of things out of their feathers, like bugs and stuff. Not so much in the winter as it's too cold for a lot of bugs, but especially now in the in the Arctic temperatures. Although today is is quite warm, uh, <laughs> but it, it's like it's so fun because they're just like. <laughs> In the summertime, they do it in our garden and stuff. Yeah, I think they're gonna be uh, a lot less, uh, you know, cooped up in their own coop, which is awesome. And since it's warm and getting warmer and soon, uh, soon to be summer or spring at least, and then summer, uh, we'll be able to have them free ranging. They don't like free ranging uh, in the snow, I guess, understandably. Although some people do that, they are not. Uh, they are not Arctic birds. They are not. They're not penguins. In fact, they're actually, they're tropical birds, right? Originally? They originally were jungle fowls. Oh, jungle, okay, jungle birds. So they're not parrots, but jungle birds. Uh, so originally, they're not used to these types of temperatures at all, although we've had them in North America for years and years and years and years. So over time, you know, they get a little more hardy. They can, they can stand the temperatures, although not polar temperatures. Like I said, they're not penguins. So I can't wait till summer and then we can have them free ranging and then we have some more plans for the land so hopefully they'll enjoy all that. But for now, we were sent this child xylophone to uh, stick here in the run uh, as a little activity for them. They love playing with these things and we've been trying to find one for a long time but we've never been able to find one unless they cost like 50 bucks. And I was like, yeah, we're not paying $50 for this. So we'll stick it here and see how they uh, see how they like it once they figure out what it is. Well, that's a fried bit. All right, chickens, come play with this thing. Try to like ding it and. They're not doing anything. <laughs> well, they might be getting interested now. Nope, sit back down. Like, hey, we're bathing here. So Ginger's molting. See all of her feathers are coming off. Oh yeah, she's, she is nice. She never did molt in the fall. And I guess she's just finally molting now. 
She's like, oh, I'm ready for winter now, I guess. Yeah, now polar vortex. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has stayed warm this this, uh, this winter, though. So yeah, that's probably part of it, hey? Yeah. And since it's usually a lot warmer inside the coop than it is outside, and even in here with all this plastic and stuff around the whole enclosure, I think... I think maybe she was like, I don't know how it works, but maybe she was like, yeah, I don't need the mold because it's it's warm all the time. So why mold and get my winter feathers? But speaking of this plastic, I think we should probably shovel off the top here. It snowed a couple times. Yeah, I think so too. The hardest part is getting up here without a ladder. Oh no! There's no foothold and there's no handhold, so you gotta just use your uh, balance or. And then once you're up here, the trick is not slipping and only staying on the on the beams. Try to put it that way if you can, because. Yeah, true. It slopes that way, so I'm not that way. Now, for the last time that we put the plastic up here, people suggested that we put on battens to hold down the plastic so it doesn't blow off but that actually makes the job of shoveling it more difficult because then when you're shoveling you keep running into those things which I think is more of a hassle than putting up the plastic once or twice when it blows off with the wind so yeah. last year it didn't blow off at all I don't think no, it didn't. this year it did because we had those super high winds there we go Easy as five. When I designed this coop, I wasn't thinking ahead into the winter with the design of having a flat uh, run right underneath a super steep pitch roof. I thought uh, that it was clever to have everything out of the rain and stuff and then I was like, oh yeah, it snows here too. Which is a big bummer because uh, stuff like this, it's not easy to get off. This is just a huge chunk of ice. Okay, now that that's over, now for the fluffy stuff. Ugh. Perhaps one day we'll make some changes to this to make snow removal easy. The only thing is, is that this is four feet in the ground, so can't really move it. But we'll think of something at some point. We also don't want to block this window. So we've built ourselves into a corner where things work great, but not optimal for winter. Almost fell off right there. <laughs> okay, got most of it out of there. The rest is fine. It's kind of hard to get with this type of snow shovel. So time to That's the worst part about this coop is shoveling off the snow. And it's actually not even that bad. Are they playing with that xylophone yet? No. Ice. One time I'm gonna tell you guys a funny story. You see how this is, that's ice or really hard snow. One time I shoveled off our trampoline because we didn't take the trampoline down for winter when I was a kid. So we had to shovel it off, right? Because we wanted to jump on it while we were while it was winter because you can jump off and jump into the snow. Anyway, heavy snowfall, probably about a foot, maybe maybe 13 inches, 14 inches, something like that. So it was sagging. So we take all the snow, we shovel it off and put it in a big pile. And we take turns jumping as high as we can, doing flips and stuff and jumping into the snow, kind of like just crazy. Uh... Now that is, now that is some ice. I can't even do the Canadian thing and stick my shovel in the snow. There we go. Anyway, overnight, we, it gets cold, whatever. We, we uh, go inside. Next day, we come out, jump on the trampoline. That's nice. It snowed again. So we shoveled the, like, I don't know, maybe three or four inches of snow off the trampoline. Put that on the pile. And then uh, we're like, hey, let's jump on this. Well, 
you see how this is ice. That was shoveled off of there not too long ago. And so the top layer is fluffy. Same thing, I jump as high as I can, swan dive backwards, I don't know what that's called, and landed like this. Now that kind of hurt a little bit because there's ice under here, but imagine jumping like 15 feet in the air and just plopping. Man, it hurt a lot. So if you're not from Canada or you're not from where there's a lot of snow, don't do that. <laughs> Trust me, it can be quite painful. Snow will freeze overnight and you will no longer be jumping into fluffy snow. Anyway, let's go clean the shop. Done! And back to how it was before, more or less. I mean, I, I think we may have even improved it a little bit by sweeping the floor here. <laughs> it gets quite dusty in here because with uh, me and Clint being in the shop, uh, we create a lot of dust. But now that we've swept it all, I think we are pretty damn spanking, which I like. So we took all the shavings that were in here and we put them back at the compost pile. And while I was there, I kind of heard some ding, 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 ding. So there wasn't a lot, but they were kind of getting interested in it, which is cool. So maybe as time goes on, maybe they'll play us a tune every time we walk by it. I don't know. But everything in here is nice and clean and I can now use it for what it's meant for and yeah there's no crap anywhere on the nail clippers here which is good and none on the floor so I think it's time we do something that I've been waiting to do for quite a while
Oh, Zenobia! I tried. <laughs>